Hello and welcome to this great videos in my opinion that is going to show you how to allocate some of your uh, resources in order to assign them to a different task. Uh, and the resources here is of course our <clears throat> most precious resources with people. Uh, person one is going to be able to uh, take any of those three tasks. We talked to that individual and he indicated that he will be charging us $40 uh, whether it's like 40000 or $40 or $40 million, uh, we're not really in this case worrying about it, but just uh, say it's $40 for the first task and $47 for the second task two, regardless of what the task two and how demanding it is, the task three. But he, uh, he agreed that that's what he will be able to charge us after he examined the type of the job he will be doing for us. Uh, the second person, she decided to actually charge us $72 for the task one, task one 36 for task two, and task three. Uh, third person decided to charge $24 for task one, so it's less than the other two, but notice uh, he or she decided to really increase some of their prices for task three. And, uh, task two. Uh, the restriction is clearly that uh, there is no need for us to have more than one person per task. So this is the allocation of the task and also the person. So if you look here horizontally, notice the task assigned should never have more than one, obviously exactly as one, not more than one, exactly as one. I should really choose my uh, uh, terminology very clearly and very accurately. So we have equal sign. We don't have greater than, or less than, equal than, uh, greater, equal to, or greater than, or less than, or equal to. It has to be equal, exactly equal. Okay. So the task assigned here. So for the person uh, in this one here, when we're trying to solve the problem, is going to be one, and this is going to be one, and this is going to be one. The same thing for the person assigned, it's going to be uh, one person assigned to task one, one person is going to be assigned to task two, and one person will be assigned to task three. Task three. So first of all, let's go ahead and create the function here. That's going to be the sum of all these. Here we go. It's going to be uh, equal to one, equal to one, uh, meaning we have to find one person for this task. Of course, remember the cost is there, and the model is going to go calculating and sorting and investigating all the sort of uh, the you know uh, comparison that need to be done in order for us to get uh, uh, one person for the task in order to get to calculate the total cost, which must be in this case based on minimization or to minimize the total cost. Every time you hear the word cost in any sort of uh, linear programming or uh, decision making, econometrics, uh, or any sort of economics or managerial uh, uh, decision, it must be to minimize the cost. Of course, the other side of the story is to maximize the profit. So this is where we're going to really uh, be doing all the calculation. Uh, another thing here, we need to make sure that the task also uh, that it will be assigned to that person should be the sum of all those, but the sum of those should never be but one. So this is, you see the one here is being clearly equal to. All right, so how are we going to do this? First of all, I wanted to introduce you to another concept, uh, also practical application that could have uh, a hopefully positive uh, usage for you in the future. Uh, uh, on the side, first of all, I want to show you the formula here and the name manager. We have no name whatsoever here, so we have not really assigned any name yet to anything. Uh, in Excel, we can be able to name uh, one single cell. For example, I did here, uh, this cell here, it was L2, but I could call it here, let's say, uh, instead of calling it L2 or leave it as, I could go ahead and name it, uh, I hope it's going to, I'm going to get some assistance here without having to put uh, value one, because I don't want to really re record this video, I recorded maybe multiple times already. So uh, this is value one, if I say here uh, 90, and of course hit always confirm, so it will allow you to edit this. If I could go ahead and select it, uh, it's going to be, let's say call it here, uh, value two instead of n2. 
that's one symbol cell. So uh, as you will notice here, if I say uh, value one, look here, it's already been registered, plus a value two, and we're going to get actually the sum of those two. That's very, very good. You know, if you would identify a cell, but you could also identify range of cells or multiple range even with one name and one variable. But you have to keep in mind the rules of how to name our variable. When we select this, we will go ahead and say, let's say, I wanted to call it range one. So range one, that for those, uh, if you notice here how I named range one, it must start with an alphabet. There is no spaces allowed. It should not have really any special characters like, uh, you know, percent sign and multiplication and all that that it violate the name of uh, uh, a range or a variable, and also choose a meaningful name for it. So I'm not going to call it R. Well, five seconds later, I'm going to forget what it is. Uh, name it range one, or maybe set one, or maybe uh, you know sales one, whatever it is pertaining to those set of data. So if I hit enter, notice now these group of five uh, cells are going to be called range one. The same thing here for if I go ahead and add multiple here uh, values and I wanted to go ahead and decide to call it a range two. Okay, so now we have a, oh, I called it, it went back to range one. I should have, go ahead and select that and call it range two. Notice uh, if I go now to name manager, I have range two and range one, of course, value one and value two also as well for a single variable. Uh, if I say here are uh, sum of range one, and you will be able to see immediately that Excel uh, highlighted this. And the same thing here, if I say uh, sum uh, open parentheses range two, and it's gonna highlight it. Uh, you could use that in any sort of calculation that we have learned in Excel. If you say here, if average, for example, uh, range one is greater than average uh, range two, so we'll say here range one is bigger. Otherwise, we'll say range, of course, double quotation because this is a text, range two is bigger. So notice. It's very helpful. If I change here, let's say, to a very large value, you will see that range two already changed. So this is very good. Now we'll learn how to learn how to name our ranges uh, and variables. I'm going to go ahead and select all this and name it cost. So I'm going to go ahead and call it cost. See? So when I refer the word cost, it's going to refer to those cells, the nine of them. Also, this one here, we're going to go ahead and name it assigned, assigned or assignment. So when I use the word assignment or the variable assignment, I'm referring to all of these. Uh, also, I'm going to go ahead and uh, name this, and I'm going to go ahead and call them person, person assigned. I'm going to use capital E. Uh, capital A person assigned because I'm not allowed to have space and this is really what we call hum uh, camel casing. Camel casing you capitalize that first letter from the first, second word or the first letter of the third word and so forth. And the same thing here we're going to go ahead and select this and I'm going to call it demand. So this and I'll explain to you also this is going to be task assignment assigned rather and hit enter don't forget to hit enter and this is the supply you know you go supply and hit enter and this is the total cost i'll call it total cost remember i'm not allowed to have a space so i'm going to go ahead and either put underscore which is allowed or i prefer the camel casing where we're capitalizing the c and here we go so now, anywhere I refer, let me go ahead and delete those. We don't need them anymore because there's my practice. And notice here, when I select this one here, immediately uh, Excel knows this is assignment. If I selected this here, 
going to give me cost if I selected this one here, it's total cost, and selected this here, it's going to be supply. So let's go ahead and understand the nature of the problem. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, the total cost is minimized because that's what the solver is going to do is in order to maximize it. No person will have more than one, one task assigned to. Remember the equal sign here. And also, no task will be assigned to more than one person. So, how are we going to do this? We're going to go ahead and select this one here. I'm going to go to go to uh, data, and we're going to go to solver. Uh, I'm sure I have something from the past, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So I was practicing with it. Click on this one here for the total cost. Here we go. And if this was in maximum max, you need to change it to minimum. And you could type the word assignment or select that. It's going to actually change it to assignment. Let's go ahead and remove those so we could go ahead and start with them ourselves. We didn't need to really put them there. Okay, here we go. And I wanted to go ahead and now and see what we're going to do. That this one here, okay, all of them, I'm going to do it all together. One second here. I need to be in the right place first here. Add it. All these will be equal to all these. I could do that individually, but it's going to take me three steps to do that. Why should I? And I go ahead and do this also. All these should be equal, equal to all these. Here we go. And now we're going to add it. And one more thing, when we do solve it, all this must be, must be equal to uh, actually, it must be binary. And click OK because we're done with all of our constraints. And I'm not going to go ahead and click Solve yet because I'm going to close it. I'm going to go ahead and see what we could get if I do here one. And since I'm not allowed to have more than one person per task, and one, and this is one. And Forgot to actually do the cost, the road cost, which is no big deal because we're going to go ahead and say sum products of cost, so I could type it, and assignment. Okay, here we go. So actually, between this, multiply by the yellow area. So here we go. <laughs> okay, sorry, my math is very dry. And now for me to go ahead and play with this a little bit even more, you know. I have to see what would be the minimum value. Obviously, you're probably seeing it's going to take me a long time to do this to come up. That's 140. If I could go ahead and do one here, and this is going to be zero, okay? Or, or yeah, we can. We only can have this, and you know, let's go ahead and play with this. This is will never be allowed, okay? Uh, this is one, so this is 147. Could do another uh, diagonal input. We could go ahead and choose this here. Uh, again, I'm not going to really waste your time by trying to do a lot of trial and error. Let the solver do the job for me to where I'm going to be able to get the minimum type of job. And all these must be, remember, this is sum. It's going to be equal to 1. So this part of the restriction that we've done. This is must be uh, equal to one. And let's go ahead and revisit the solver one more time. Remember, total cost is the one chosen by changing the yellow area, which is the assignment. Assignment should be all binary because it has to be one or zero. We cannot have negative value. We cannot have two, you know. And uh, person assigned must be uh, equal to the demand. And also, the task assigned must be equal to the supply. Okay? And let's go ahead and solve it. Remember, there is no unconstructed variables, non negative, because we don't have any negative value. And it should be a simple linear programming. Click OK, and let's see what's going to happen. All right, it gave us an answer. Let's go ahead and reveal it. Here we go. It's 129. Obviously, much better than the 140 and the 147 when I did actually the diagonal, uh, when I entered the diagonally, the data. And this is basically is going to be the best possible option for us in order to choose uh, person one for task two, choose person two for task three, and choose uh, uh, person person three.
for task one. Those are completely meeting the constraints. These are completely meeting the constraints. We are in good shape. Thank you very kindly for taking your time to watch all these videos, and this is probably going to help you somehow, somewhere in your future when you become a big shot and a big decision maker somehow. All right, take care. We'll see you later.